how to build a drawer using the quarter 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 method. I like to refer to it normally as the half 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 method. because that way it can be half of any workpiece that you're using. Uh, in other words, if I was using, going to build drawers that were three quarters sides and back, then I would do three eighths, half of the three quarters. When you're using half inch material, you use half of that. So that's a quarter, 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 quarter. What does that mean? That means that this dado stack here is going to be set a quarter of an inch wide, a quarter of an inch high, and a quarter of an inch from a fence. All right? Now, before you start with a dado stack and all of that, you just cut your raw pieces for your front and the back and your two sides and your base. How do you adjust sizes for the joinery? Because these things are going to kind of go inside of each other. You'll see that when I get further along. Well, I want my drawer to be 26 and a quarter, and skosh under that, 26 and a quarter wide, and then 18 and a half deep, and four and a quarter tall. And so, uh, what I do with the two sides is I go ahead and cut them at four and a quarter. I cut everything at four and a quarter for the sides, the front and the back. I get that done first. So rip it to four and a quarter. Then lengthwise for the sides, I make them the full length. So if I want 18 and a half, I cut them to 18 and a half. So here's my two sides. I take these two sides. So I've cut them four and a quarter by 18 and a half and I mark them with a triangle. The triangle is facing me. I have looked at what I want to be my show faces on the inside of the drawer, and I have put those together as if it's the inside of the drawer, and then marked it with a triangle. In this triangle, the pointed ends will point to the outside. The triangle's on the top, so I know what's on the top, I know what's outside and I know what's inside. So I know everything and I know this direction too. So that one carpenter triangle tells me how I want these boards done. Size wise for the front and the back, you make an adjustment because what's going to happen is when you set this up, your front and back are going to go halfway into the side. So. If I want 26 and a quarter wide, I'm going to take off a 16th on each side for spacing. So it will fit in tightly, but still slide. So 26 and a quarter, take off way a 16th and a 16th. That's an eighth. So now it's 26 and an eighth. And then when I put this side in, it's not going to go all the way to the edge here. It's going to go halfway into the side. And so I want to take off a quarter of an inch over here, half of the half, and a quarter of an inch over here. So basically what I do is size the length of my front and back and my base should all be one thickness less than what I want to be. So if I want 26 and a quarter, take away a 16th and a 16th, now I'm at 26 and an eighth, and then I want to take away the thickness of one of my work pieces, so that's a half of an inch or four eighths. I have cut my front and my back to be four and a quarter by 25 and five eighths. So you make the same adjustment for the front and back as you do for the base. So I've got those pieces cut. The other thing I like to do, well, a couple things I do. I mark the two sides when I look at them and I say, hey, where's my, where's my show faces that I want on the inside of the drawer? 
and what's the top, what I want to be on the top. So I get it oriented that way, and then I draw a triangle on it. And that triangle is pointing, in this case it's the front and back, so I make the triangle point toward me, and it's on the top, and now it tells me everything I want to know by just putting that triangle back together. If you want your drawer to be 18 and a half inches deep, this panel um, is going to go underneath the, the back, but it's only going to go halfway into the front. So instead of it being 18 and a half, it should be 18 and a quarter. It's going to go halfway into the front, and the front is a half of an inch wide. So your uh, bottom side should be the same width as your front and back. In, in my case here, it's in 25 and 5 eighths, but the depth should be a quarter of an inch less. So first I need to set this up, and I only need to set it up once, and that is I want this to be a quarter of an inch high. I'm going to take a uh, set of bars. These are from eye gauging, and I like them a lot, and I'm going to find the one quarter. So here's my one quarter bar, and what it is is one quarter here on the top thickness. So when I lay this down, that's one quarter. Let me raise my blade. My saw stop is completely unplugged. I don't want to do this kind of stuff with it plugged in. It's close to a quarter as I can, and we're going to test it. I've also got that a quarter of an inch wide. I know how to set up my dado stack to be exactly a quarter of an inch because I do these kind of drawers all the time. So I have my inside and my outside, and in my case I got two little shims inside there. So my uh, this is a quarter of an inch wide. Next, what I really want is a tall fence. So here's my tall fence. And uh, we're going to bring this over. We're going to try to set this tall fence. I'm going to move it forward so there's no cutout at the blade here. And I'm going to move that over and I'm going to set it at a quarter of an inch. Now, let me get some uh, braces in there. So this fence of mine is uh, using match fit dovetail clamps. I want them fairly near the bottom so it's pulling it tight across the bottom. If I have it too high it, it might pull the fence across. I've got a number of videos about doing various uh, jigs using the match fit dovetail system and the tall fence which is also a board straightener uh, which is also a uh, tapering jig so that fence is a good straight up and down 90 degrees which is important let me try to set it at a quarter of an inch from the blade so sometimes when you press down and tighten, it shifts your fence one way or the other. Mine shifts my fence to the left a little bit. So I kind of get it up next to it, back it off just a hair. Come on, back off. And then when I tighten it down, I usually find <coughs> it moves it over that hair again. So there it's rubbing, but it's not so tight that it's moving it. So I think I got a good measurement there. Thing. So let's take scrap wood and first let's see if we can get a slot down here that's a quarter of an inch wide, quarter of an inch deep, and a quarter of an inch from this edge. So uh, get my uh, saw stop plugged back in now for a little test run. I'm going to try putting or into my electrical outlet that runs my dust collection. Sometimes if I get a wide enough, heavy enough dado stack, the 12 or 13 amp switch there 
I overrun it when I start up. Uh, and so sometimes I got to put it in my 20 amp electric. When you do the real work, it's important that you keep this pressed down over the blade the whole way because if you let it ride up, then you won't be a quarter of an inch deep in that part. Well, let's check it. How do we do? Let's uh, use a set of calipers and check the depth of that. And that is right on one quarter. Very good. Let's check the width. If you don't use calipers, you're making a mistake. Learn how to use them. They're, they're absolutely fantastic. So one quarter again. And then let's check how far it is in from the edge. And right on one quarter. So I've got this set up for one quarter, one quarter, one quarter. I'm pretty happy with that. One of the cuts I'm going to do is going to be inside of the board, of the side. So these three cuts represent the three things that we're going to do for our joinery. We're going to have a slot in the bottom of all four pieces for the bottom to fit into. We're going to have on the two sides, we're going to have a slot or a dado in this case. A slot is one running with the grain and a dado is one across the grain. So anyway, we're going to have another dado here running top to bottom on the sides and then we're going to have for the front and the back a tenon here and that tenon is going to be a quarter thick and a, and a quarter in. So everything is a quarter, quarter, quarter. So when these skits put together that tenon, if this fits right, will go into this slot. So this is where I get into do I do any adjustments. Well, um, dang, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy. That's, uh, went in reasonably. Putting some glue on here might make that a little more difficult, but I like that nice fit like that. Get my triangle lined up here so I know this is the top. So I'm going to put that on the inside. Well, my inside is the open part of the triangle. So that helps tell me uh, what where the inside is so I don't get the wrong orientation. And the other thing is, it's going to be on the bottom. So I'm going to take my triangle mark here, make sure the open part of the triangle is down, because that's the inside, and make sure the pencil mark is out here. That way, where it's going to cut is on the bottom. All right, so anyway, those marks help me stay oriented. I want them to be the open side down and uh, the mark away from the fence. We'll do that to all four of them first. Plug in the saw stop. When we're pushing through here, we want to keep it down. We don't want to let it rise up, otherwise we won't get the depth that we need. see there we've got the uh, we've got this slot or groove on the inside and on the bottom and so this is the way that drawers will will go now the uh, on the two sides on the front and the back front and the back of the sides we're gonna put a dado 
going across. But we don't change our table setup at all. So on those two, we're going to put a dado. And that dado is going to go on the same face as this. In other words, down. So I'm going to go down and just run it uh, this way. There's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, one would be uh, just to go ahead and because you can keep it up against that fence and it's pretty short, I don't see much trouble with, with it getting off sync. The other thing I could do is put in the miter uh, gauge and then change the backing behind it. And uh, that would protect against tear out, uh, keep it more secure. But to do that, these go down and up against that fence. Nothing should get bound up. So let's give it a go. Just don't push it too hard against the fence so you don't get a lot of friction. <laughs> So our next cut is to put a tenon on here. Now, we want the tenon to be on the uh, inside. So I want to cut a rabbit in, in this part here. I want to cut a rabbit here because I want the tenon on the inside because that's going to fit into the sides and then come out flush. So to get that tenon on the inside, so if I did it right there, the tenon would be on the outside. No, no, it's gonna cut the rabbit on the outside and it's gonna leave me my tenon on the inside. And that's the way we want it. So we want the uh, inside face up against the fence. And we can tell the inside by the open part of our triangle. Now I'm just going to pass this. I've got zero clearance here. This is a special plate I saved just for the purpose of, uh, darn it, I didn't turn on my microphone. So up till now the microphone sounded pretty crappy, but let's fix that going forward anyway. And maybe you can see the difference. Hopefully that connected. Yeah, looks like it. All right, so there's a couple ways to do this. One way is to, because of the tall fence, is to hold it secure on that tall fence and run it over. Because I got zero clearance, there's no place where it can dip down uh, inside of that groove. And so that should be safe. You could also have a device. You could also, uh, you know, do something where you use uh, two paddles and pass over it. And another option, if you're totally uncomfortable with it, and what you would like to do is pass it over this way, then we want that tenon to be right on the end. So what you would do is insert a quarter inch fiber board in between the fence and the blade. That way you could push up against it and there. But I'm just going to go I'm going to cut it right here. Think about this again. I want the tenon on the inside and the tenon's going to be where it's not cutting. So I want to cut on the outside and here we go. <laughs> You may be wondering what this is. Uh, this is from Dura, Dura Grit, 
and it's a 60 grit uh, substitution for sandpaper. I have cut the top off of it so it's thinner and then that way I can always have it right there in my main pocket of my apron. And then when I'm dealing with plywood or anything with tear out, I can get rid of it the second I'm working with it. Or when I'm dealing with uh, factory edges, I can sand those quickly. All right, so I've got these uh, two, all of the sides and the front and the back have all the appropriate joinery in them. Now let's talk about the bottom. I want that same kind of a tenon on the bottom. And uh, I've decided that this is my nice face. So I want to mark that with a triangle. And we'll call this uh, the front toward me. So this is my orientation of that piece. So I want a tenon on the top side or on this face side of the three sides and I don't need it on the back. I don't want it on the back. The back's going to be flush underneath the, uh, the back side. So to get that tenon on the top side here, I want my top to go against the fence so the outside edge will get cut by the dado stack and then that'll leave the tenon on the upside or the face side. Do not touch your fence, do not touch your blade, do not touch your height, do not touch anything. You can unplug it if you want to, but don't do anything else. So you may find yourself with something not fitting and then you need to come back and uh, do some more joinery. I can't tell you how handy this little Duragrit thing is for cleaning up. I didn't get a good, oh okay, that's just a piece, that's not a solid piece, that's just a little piece there. So, hopefully, now again, I don't want, my temptation there was to move that fence out of my way. On this slot on the back, I don't need that. I want to go underneath that. So I want to cut this whole piece off. So this is halfway through. If I run it over this, being careful to stay out of the way of this piece that might get lodged in there, uh, then uh, we're good. The fact is I could hold a piece here like this and that should keep it. So I'm gonna cut that off. I'm not gonna raise my blade or anything. <laughs> So right there was the advantage of the gripper uh, being able to hold that piece secure so it wouldn't fly anywhere. All right. Again, I'm not going to touch this in case I have to come back. So I'm going to go over and do my assembly now. Everything should be ready. Let's do a dry assembly first. Um, so this is going to go into there and this is going to go into here put those clamps on there to hold it then i can turn the whole thing upside down and then this will go into there and then i can slide in my bottom so that's all going to work great I haven't dry fit my bottom.
perfect. So that's flush there. Just because of that design of having the tenon be halfway through and a quarter of an inch up for the slot, and so it works perfect. Stay together, baby. All right. And there is my drawer. Before I put it together, I like to do some shaping to my sides here. I can either do that after the drawer is all together, or I can do it while they're separate pieces. I prefer to do it while they're separate pieces. So I'm going to set up for doing uh, that next. This is done. The quarter, quarter, quarter system is right here and this is done. Everything is fit together. There's no way when you pull on the front that that front's going to come off because you've got that going into the uh, side. You have the stop, the bottom for additional stability for everything. That'll be glued. And that drawer is rock solid. All we're going to do now is add glue and add the braces. I only need uh, two clamps going the lengthwise to hold that all together while it dries. And that'll be perfect. Okay. So that is how you do drawers using the quarter, quarter, quarter method, or what I prefer to call the half, half, half method. And when you're using half inch plywood, it translates to the quarter, 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 one half of one half. If I was using three quarter inch stock, then it would be three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, which is how I would set up my table saw uh, dado stack to be three eighths wide, three eighths tall, and three eighths from the fence and then everything else would be done exactly the same way. Well, that's my one way that I make drawers. Uh, I use it almost every time. I find it so great, particularly when I'm not just doing one drawer like this, but when I'm doing, uh, you know, 10 drawers or five drawers the same, you get that set up once and then you just run everything through to, to create fancy joinery. It's called a locking rabbit joint, this is, but it's uh, easy to do when you have a table saw with a dado stack. So that'll be a wrap. Always remember, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. Small Workshop Guy, signing off. So I'm going to add a profile to my tops of my sides. Just looks better on the drawers to have some sort of design feature. So I've got a great big uh, straight bit in here, uh, and I've got the fence set so it's about three eighths of an inch from the leading edge of this. I've got a brace over here so that when I push this up against that spinning blade. There's going to be a pretty good chunk there. It would want to just drive it that way. I've got this to keep it from coming up. I've got this to keep it from going that way. And then once I've got it under control, I, uh, I'm just going to push it along and that part's easy till I get about halfway and then I'm going to flip it and do the same thing again and then meet the two up so that way i only need a brace on one side and i want to make sure i'm cutting on the top of my board all right so there we go let's uh, see how this works be best to have this guide down but then that gets a little difficult for me to push through and i do want to have this uh, push stick so I'm going to leave that up. I got my safety glasses on and uh, probably ought to put on my hearing protection. Eyeglasses, hearing, and uh, here we go.
And so there's the uh, design I'm after. I think that looks really cool. And then we're going to do some rounding over it as well. 